friends, welcome to another product demo from Silicon Craftsman, the product and user experience guild at NIR. First of all, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. A few weeks ago, we made a big shift towards making more content because we realized that there are hundreds, if not thousands of people joining the ecosystem every day, and it is very hard to onboard them. The telegrams and the discords can get super messy. And even with the rockstar moderators that we have, it can be challenging for people to get the right level of information to get the most value. So the purpose of this channel is to go deep into all these products, probably a little bit too much information, more than you need to be successful at using them. But we want to make sure that we take people from being absolute beginners in crypto or in the near ecosystem to being absolute legends and that you can show off next time you catch up with your friends and that you can onboard them too. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you click the subscribe button. We have a ton of content coming up and we hope that you get some value. Today, we're going to be diving deep into Borrow Cash. You may have heard about Borrow Cash because I keep mentioning them on my Twitter feed. I am extremely bullish on Borrow Cash, on them as a platform and what they represent for the near ecosystem. So really quick overview, Borrow Cash is a lending platform or a money market. It is very similar to Avi or Compound if you're familiar with those. The way it works is you're able to deposit assets and then borrow money against them. We'll be diving deeper into the features of Borrow Cash and do a full rundown on how to deposit and borrow money. But first, let's dive a little bit deeper on why I am so bullish on Borrow Cash. To understand Borrow Cash, we need to look at two things. The first one is DeFi as a category and the impact that it has had in the crypto ecosystem as a whole. And the second one is DeFi within the near ecosystem. Where are we at and what we can expect for growth in the future? So looking at DeFi more broadly, I want to take you back to summer 2020 or DeFi summer 2020. DeFi summer 2020 is when we see exponential growth, explosive. It is really the beginning, the catalyst of the bull run that we have had for two years. And I think there are two main reasons why DeFi is a catalyst for the bull run. The first one is very simple to understand. You have people that are visionaries. They believe in cryptocurrency. They're holding a bunch of assets that they're probably contributing to their development. And now they're able to put those assets down and borrow USD. When people take out USD as a loan, there's usually two options. The first one is you use the money to pay for your bills or buy something nice to treat yourself. The second option is you buy more crypto. And this certainly happened back then. The key reasoning here is you're putting down an asset as collateral that you expect that it will increase in value and you're taking out a debt that will stay the same. So if you use the money or the USD fixed value debt to buy more of the asset that will increase in value, it is basically free money. So through that cycle, we can see how projects go from, for instance, Solana, seven, 10, $20, all the way to $250. It's an endless loop of people putting down assets, borrowing USD, purchasing more assets. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily a good thing. This sort of leveraging and over leveraging leads to market corrections. We're actually going through one such correction right now. But overall, it is important to understand this dynamic. The second reason why I think DeFi is very important and a lot of people miss this is that DeFi becomes the proof of concept. They're able to demonstrate what the technology can do. And arguably, DeFi becomes the first product or service on the blockchain to reach product market fit. Now, bringing it all back to near, and I'm going to slow down because if you've tuned out, I want this to be core takeaway. Near has a unique setup. DeFi on near is very early. Namely, we have not had a lending platform or a, a way to leverage up until now. So when you think about it, it is extremely remarkable that NIR has made it all the way to the top 20 without any leverage. Sure, some of the NIR holders have been able to obtain loans against some of the other assets in other blockchains. However, we have hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of existing NIR holders who strongly believe in the blockchain and the vision and that are building on it they have not been able to access liquidity from their existing holdings. This is huge. So borrow cash is part of the, what I call the trifecta. We have Metapool as a liquid staking solution. We have Oin Finance as a synthetic US dollar. And then we have borrow cash as a money market. Now, this is not financial advice, but my theory, and please let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, is that 
Once we have the ability to borrow money against our existing near holdings, we're going to see very rapid growth because we're going to see the perfect storm of people taking out USD loans against their assets to buy more near, taking loans against their assets to invest the projects in the ecosystem, or ultimately taking loans against their assets to pay for the living expenses so that they don't have reason to sell near in the short term. What this means to me is we could be looking at a much higher price by the end of the year. However, in this channel, we're not so much interested about price, but we're interested about the product and the growth cycles. So I'm going to give you a really quick glimpse on what the trifecta looks like. The first component of the trifecta is Metapool. Metapool's enabled liquid staking. What is liquid staking? With traditional staking, you put down your near on any validator that you choose and you earn 12% return paid out in near. Metapool adds two extra components. When you deposit your NIR with Metapool, they automatically delegate that NIR across many validators, which is excellent for the centralization and to reduce the risk of your validator going offline. But also they do something extra. They give you ST NIR. So ST NIR literally stands for stake NIR and it is a receipt. It is a proof that you have some assets deposited in some validators. This ST near is designed to be taken to DeFi and to be used as what we call DeFi money Legos. Like I guess that you can tell why I am so excited and so bullish about Metapool. However, if we look at the Metapool stats, we can see that they only have about 2.5 million near deposited, which at current prices, it's gone down a fair bit recently. It's just over $25 million. To put things in perspective, there are currently 383 million near staked. 2.5 million in Metapool, 383 million near staked. So I guess that the question that you'd have to ask yourself is how much of the existing near that is already being staked is going to move over to Metapool once there is a use case for ST near? And that's the kicker. My theory is Metapool is an amazing service waiting to explode because up until now, the use cases for ST near or the reason for migrating from a normal validator over to Metapool has been very limited. And this is where Borrow Cash comes in. So Borrow Cash has already enabled ST near as collateral. This means that you're able to deposit ST near, earn money on your near and borrow money against it. So we can start to see where Borrow Cash comes in as a major player. Now I'm, I'm just going to drop a bit of criticism in alpha here. There is an existing use case for ST near, which is Oint Finance. You are able to deposit ST near now and issue NUSDO, which is a synthetic US dollar native to the near ecosystem. However, once again, when we go to Oint Finance, we can see that the ingredients necessary for this to be a success, what we call product market fit, are not there yet. And I'll tell you why. At the moment, there's only just over a million dollars, which is nothing of NUSDO issued. Why? Two problems. NUSDO has limited convertibility. If you go to Ref Finance and you try to swap NUSDO into NIR, which is the only pool, there's an exchange rate of $11.52. That is a massive premium. That's over 10%. The price of NIR in the market right now is about $10. So that lack of convertibility is an issue. Now I'm going to give you an alpha. Ref Finance recently released Source, which is a stable swap, where you can swap between USDT, USDC, and DAI. There are some technical improvements being made to the platform that will enable all their assets such as UST or NUSDO to be added to this functionality. We're not going to cover these in too much detail today, but we can start to see how all the pieces are coming together. I, I would expect that NUSDO being added to both Ref Finance through Source and hopefully to borrow cash as an asset that you can borrow in will also add to the hyper growth cycle. So having looked at the statistics and the potential of both Metapool and Oint Finance, we can see how Borrow Cash brings it all together. Borrow Cash finally gives users a very clear value proposition for ST near and potentially it gives also a very good use case for NUSDO. So hopefully I've made a very strong case for Borrow Cash and you are as excited as I am and you decide to stick around as we jump deep into Borrow Cash. 
Now, if you're watching this channel, you're probably very smart and I would encourage you all to always go to the primary sources. Don't wait for YouTube influencers to make a video on something. Everyone's really busy. There's a lot, there's a lot happening in the ecosystem. It's very hard to cover everything in time to reap the maximum benefit. So always go to the primary source. So the first thing I would strongly encourage you to do is to follow Borrow Cash on Medium, join their Telegram, join their Discord. Their Medium has only three posts and the three posts are fire. So the first one I'd like to show you is the initial post from October, 2021. I love the extremely simple, strong value proposition. What Borrow does, it unlocks yield from the base layer it unlocks yield across chain. It enables self-paying loans. Whoosh, absolutely mind blown. So unlocking yield from the base layer we've already touched on. This would be done through ST near. Basically, you're able to have your ST near generating your passive income through staking, and you're able to obtain liquidity against that. However, the borrow cash team is full of savages, visionaries, ambition. And we can see how they have already planned to include assets from other blockchains, such as Stake Near, Bonded Luna, and Staked Sol. Finally, self-paying loans. And this is the beauty about having yield-bearing assets used as collateral. They have an extremely simple example here, which makes it easy to grasp with the maths. Imagine taking out a 100 USDC loan using $1,000 worth of ST Near as collateral. Remember, ST Near earns 10% Near roughly per year. Assuming modest price movement, so the price of NEAR stays the same, the loan will pay itself off in less than a year. This is essentially the equivalent of borrowing against your future yield. This is so incredibly exciting. Now, there's a very cheeky reference here to modest price movement and that being a fair assumption. Once again, the kicker here is that NEAR has not had leveraging yet. If you are ever considering a strategy of leveraging through lending, you really need to know where you are in the market cycle. So borrowing money against near right now to buy more near, probably safer because we are at an earlier stage of explosive growth. Borrowing money against Solana at $200, much riskier because the chain has already had 100x growth. So once again, you always need to manage your personal risk and you need to do an assessment of where the market is at. The second post goes into detail on how to use the testnet Testnet is really good if you just want to play around with the platform, familiarize yourself with the concept. It's all fake money. There's nothing at risk. There are detailed instructions, which will be in the description and a form to provide feedback. And then finally, we have the major announcement from the 21st of January, four days ago. We're getting it early. Borrow Cash has finally launched in beta private mode. This means that the product is still being tested. However, it is now available to the public and anyone can go and participate. There is a form for providing feedback, which I would strongly encourage everyone to do. And there is a bug bounty. The most important thing that you need to know that you need to take away from this beta testing program is do not put more than $500 in, in the unlikely event that there is a flaw with a contract or with a platform and some users experience losses. The platform is willing to cover up to $500. So let's jump into borrow cash. So the interface is very simple. We can see that from the beta testers is $45,000 already deposited. We did a bit of uh, beta testing yesterday on the column on the right. You can see that I've already deposited some S to near and some near. The platform allocates a different collateral value to each asset. So for instance, S to near. It's only 50%. That means that if we deposit $100 worth of ST near, we can only borrow up to 50 USD. Each asset has a different collateral value based on how risky the asset is deemed to be. Uh, the, the price swings near the collateral value is 60%. It's interesting that for most users, it doesn't really make sense to deposit near as collateral because you could deposit ST near and the loan pays itself. However, there is a consideration that even though the loan pays itself, you're able to borrow less money. Let's see what the collateral value is for ETH, 60% as well. So it's a very conservative platform. I like it. When we go to the borrow section, there is a borrow APY. These interest rates are calculated dynamically. 
So it is advised that you always come back and check the status of your position. Also recommended that you always keep some funds on the side in case that you need to add more collateral to maintain your position healthy. Yesterday I borrowed some USDC. I'm currently paying 0.74% on that loan. I really hope that as the platform grows, we're able to attract enough capital to provide extremely competitive interest rates such as this one, because I've been accumulating near for a while and I would really love to be able to borrow at these rates. On the portfolio section, we can see all the assets that we have currently deposited and borrowed. And we have very simple call to actions. We're able to repay our USD and we're able to withdraw or adjust your collateral, which means we can take out the assets that are not currently being used towards a loan. And we're also able to adjust how much of the assets that we have deposited we want to be counted as collateral. Remember that this is a money market. So when you deposit assets, you're actually earning interest in them. So you may not want all the assets to be used as collateral. Just to wrap it all up, I would strongly encourage you all to go to Metapool and do some staking there, get ST near, go to OIN Finance and issue some NUSBO, and most importantly, go to borrow cash and do some beta testing. Remember, do not put more than 500 US dollars in. And if you come across any errors or you have any recommendations on how the platform can be improved, there is a form. Now, the final alpha link before I let you go, if we go to the documentation, the very last section is the DAO. So Borrow Cash is a decentralized platform and will be owned and governed by the community. It has a very similar structure to the Ref DAO. There will be an initial structure that has five council members, often from the core team. And this is the important bit. There will be 15 members from the community that can vote on proposals. From my experience with REF, the way that community board members are selected is from within the community, people that are very active on the Discord, on the REF, just answering questions, helping onboard people that do user testing, that provide really useful feedback, that have experience and insights from other ecosystems that can be used from the platform. These are the people that their input is acknowledged. Also a cheeky side note, community board positions are often remunerated. So it could also be a nice way for you to start accumulating a bit more coins. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed today. Make sure that you subscribe and like. We have a ton more content coming up. If you have any questions or recommendations, leave them up in the link. Take care.